It all began in 1963 when Marvel debuted Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's The X-Men. Most of the original members of the team were all present and accounted for in that first issue. But we would eventually learn how they joined Xavier's group in flashback stories that would come in the years to follow. Cyclops, Iceman, the Angel, and the Ever Agile Beast represented those first students. This core group, along with Jean Grey, also known as Marvel Girl, would remain at the center of the team for the next 12 years, with only the occasional variation. Jean was actually the only member of Xavier's first class to join in issue one, though later continuity would tell us that she had actually known the professor and worked with him for years prior. In 1966, the first new team member came and went pretty quickly. Mimic lasted all of three issues before losing his powers. Changeling soon followed, disguised as Professor X, only to die two issues later. Polaris and her man Havoc, the brother of Cyclops, would become on-again, off-again members. And in 1970, Marvel actually stopped printing new X-Men stories for five years. But don't worry, in 1975, the team was rebooted with almost all new members. By the late 70s, all new, all different X-Men consisted of an international lineup. The German Nightcrawler, the Canadian Wolverine, Banshee from Ireland, Storm from Kenya, the Japanese Sunfire, Colossus from Russia, and the Native American Thunderbird. Their first mission was to save the original team from the living, mutated island called Krakoa. At the end of that adventure, only Cyclops stayed on from the first group. He would lead these new X-Men until Storm took over in issue 139. Years later, a group of doomed X-Men was retconned into this time period. They attempted to save the original team from Krakoa and failed. Only then was the international team that we know so well activated by Xavier. This would soon become a golden age for the book, as writer Chris Claremont came on board for his legendary 16-year run. Teaming with artist John Byrne in particular resulted in iconic storylines like the Dark Phoenix Saga and Days of Future Past. By the early 80s, the roster began to become more fluid, with members coming and going a bit more often. New teammates like Kitty Pride, the youngest X-Men at the time, Kitty's faithful dragon Lockheed, and Rogue, a former villain, would join the group. And even the X-Men's ultimate nemesis, Magneto, saw the light and became the new headmaster at his old friend Xavier's school, for a time anyway. During this period, the first of what would eventually become many different X-Men spin-off teams arrived. The New Mutants were a selection of students solely meant to be trained in their powers and not see combat, as if that was ever going to happen. Another offshoot of the team came in 1986 called X-Factor. Made up of the original five X-Men, including the recently resurrected Jean Grey, this group was estranged from the current X-Men team for several years. And the X-Men lineup became even more diverse, with time travelers, interdimensional beings, and even disco queens joining up. In 1989, when the X-Men were believed dead after the fall of the mutant storyline, a band of the team's allies called the Mere Island X-Men joined together for a very brief stint. By the early 1990s, the X-Men themselves were now popular enough to spawn a second comic featuring the core group. Artist Jim Lee, a rising star at Marvel who today is one of the most popular comics creators ever, worked on the main X-Book, Uncanny X-Men, before moving on to X-Men Volume 2. He provided the art and co-wrote the book, the first issue of which is still the best-selling comic of all time with sales of over 8.1 million copies. In this era, fan favorites like Gambit and Bishop debuted and became part of the team. In fact, there were so many X-Men now that they had to divide into two separate groups, the blue and gold teams. The new mutant Cannonball finally graduated to full X-Men status. Meanwhile, his old team had morphed into a group called X-Force. A British team of mutants called Excalibur was also active now. And the members of X-Factor, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Angel, Iceman, and Beast, finally rejoined their old teammates as well. Two different alternate reality versions of Cyclops and Jean Grey's son also reported for duty, Cable and Nate Grey.
By the time the early 2000s rolled around, the X-Books had fallen into something of a lull. But when writer Grant Morrison, along with artist Frank Quitely, took over X-Men Volume 2 in 2001, he also took the mutants to new storytelling heights. The book was renamed New X-Men, and it turned much of its drama inward to examine the struggles the teammates themselves faced in their personal lives. The drama of being a mutant was, after all, what the X-Men had been founded on. It was also Morrison who made the former villain Emma Frost, aka the White Queen, into an X-Men, and she's been a major player on the team ever since. Morrison also introduced the character Zorn, a mutant who somehow had a star in his head. He eventually revealed himself to be Magneto in disguise. Destroying Xavier's mansion and overtaking New York in a devastating attack, he was ultimately defeated by the X-Men. Confusing matters even further though, Zorn's story would later be rewritten to say he wasn't actually Magneto, but had just impersonated him. Longtime writer Chris Claremont had by now moved over to a new X-Men title called Extreme X-Men, but the book only lasted until 2004. Also in 2001, Marvel launched Ultimate X-Men, which rebooted and reimagined many familiar characters like Wolverine and Cyclops. This take on Xavier's mutants existed outside of the regular series reality and was written by Mark Miller. In the mid-2000s, Extreme X-Men was replaced by another new book, Astonishing X-Men. That title was written by Joss Whedon, best known at the time as the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But Whedon would eventually go on to direct the first Avengers movie as well as its sequel, Age of Ultron. While following up Morrison's new X-Men would be tough, Whedon's time with the mutants proved to be a hit. Astonishing featured Whedon's trademark ability to meld great character work with cool action and, of course, plenty of humor. By now, the roster of X-Men was frequently in flux, with several teams operating in multiple books. New members came and went more often, and an array of former X-Men foes like Sabretooth, Lady Mastermind, and Omega Sentinel would join the team. Many other mutants were also featured in the books now, most of them students at the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. Though not technically X-Men, these kids often found themselves in the heat of battle, and some would eventually be recruited to full team status. Meanwhile, the House of M storyline during this period saw an Avenger, the Scarlet Witch, use her abilities to take away the powers of some 90% of the mutant population of planet Earth including her father Magneto and her brother Quicksilver. But even with this cataclysmic event, new members kept finding their way to the X-Men all the same. By the end of the 2000s, the X-Mansion had been destroyed again, and the X-Men were thrown into disarray. But Cyclops led the charge in rebuilding the team with their new headquarters in San Francisco. A storyline during this time called Dark Reign overtook the entire Marvel Universe, including the X-Men. This tale led to Prince Namor finally joining the X-Men, which was appropriate since he's really the first Marvel mutant character ever. He was actually created in 1939 before Marvel even existed as a company. In Dark Reign, longtime Spider-Man foe Norman Osborn rose to power after a Skrull invasion of Earth. Osborn then appointed Emma Frost and Namor as leaders of a group called the Dark X-Men, which included Cloak and Dagger. Not officially sanctioned by the real X-Men, the Dark X-Men was made up of several characters who would soon turn on Osborn and join the actual team. Eventually, Cyclops and Wolverine had a falling out, with Wolverine returning to the X-Men's original home in Westchester, New York. There, he and several other X-Men rebuilt Xavier's school, which was now called the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. This, of course, opened up the doors to even more new mutants, including some truly outlandish characters like Dupe and Krakoa. This Krakoa is actually a male spawn of the original whom the X-Men had previously encountered. He was used by the Hellfire Club to attack the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, but was fended off by new characters like Warbird. Both characters would eventually join the X-Men. In 2013, fan-favorite writer Brian Michael Bendis launched a book called All New X-Men. The concept behind this title featured the original team of five who traveled through time into the future to meet their older, not always wiser selves. Bendis also resurrected the Uncanny X-Men title, 
Here, Cyclops set up a rival school named after his mentor, Charles Xavier, which was built on the site of Wolverine's old Weapon X facility. And perhaps our favorite X-Man is one we never even knew about until 2014, Forget-Me-Not. His mutant power is to be forgotten, which means he's been on the team for years, but no one really remembers it. Not even you.